This bone right here is the one that sits right back here. That one? Yep. That's your mastoid tip. And this is where you hear out of. That? Yep. So quick look in your ear. Good job. What I started to think about was, you know, how we do things currently and how that could be improved. And obviously 3D printing was big in the news and um, an emerging technology. So I thought that, you know, perhaps we could actually use CT data from our patients to generate better models for learning and simulating in our temporal bone lab. So that's where we basically got the idea for this. And at first, you know, we just use CT CAT scan image data um, from a temporal bone CAT scan and that allowed us to create a model with bony anatomy. But we realized pretty quickly that there's a lot more to it for a good surgical simulation for our residents to learn and to practice. And that included all the soft tissue structures like arteries and veins and nerves and things like that. So what we're looking at here is a patient CT scan from a pediatric patient of Dr. Rose's. Um, so what you're looking at is the three axial, sagittal, and coronal views of the CT scan. So this software will basically turn um, these shadings of dark and light pixels and translate that into what is bone, what is soft tissue, what is air. The real challenge is uh, to go all the way from a medical imaging scan all the way to a 3D printing model. And it might seem simple and straightforward, but there are usually a lot of uh, hurdles that you have to uh, get over. And, uh, and there's a steep learning curve, especially for engineers. We can't develop something like this without the medical side of this, and they have a hard time doing it without us. So the collaboration is really what is doing this. Uh, we have to meet on, on, on a regular basis to, to move the technology forward. And uh, as you're going to see that we're spending hours together uh, just getting uh, some of these things done. A lot of our students love to be involved in this because they feel that they're doing something for somebody else. In, in our temporal bone lab, the residents essentially practice and are trained and learn with um, cadaver specimens. And that uh, is good, but um, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow you to know exactly what you're drilling ahead of time or what, you know, what type of specimen or anatomy you're going to be learning on. So with the ones that we 3D print, um, we actually know exactly what's in there, the intricate internal anatomy. Um, is represented on these models, but and we know ahead of time exactly what's going to be in there. It gives us the potential to to test them. We could place tumors or do unusual anatomy that, that, that the faculty teaching staff knows about that the residents don't know about. We can also test them in a standardized way, so that's an advantage. And then in particular with these pediatric models, this is something that really isn't routinely available to the residents. Um, as, a, as a specimen to drill. Of course, here at UNC, one of our most common surgeries um, in otology is cochlear implantation, uh, among other surgeries uh, on the uh, mastoid or temporal bone area. You know, we really think it's a big benefit now that the residents have the opportunity to um, practice and simulate their surgical skills um, on these uh, pediatric models before, you know, operating on children in the operating room. And that's really something new that they haven't had the chance to do before. The cooperation we're, we're having to generate a model specific for a preoperative patient um, is really a, a big culmination of this project. He'll have a facial nerve monitor on also. What is that? Um, there are little electrodes in your face that would tell us if we were near the facial nerve, okay? Um, or stimulating it in any way. So that helps protect you, plus we've seen your CT scan, and we're going to have this model that, that uh, uh, I'm going to practice on uh, tonight so that I'll know exactly where everything is before we do this surgery.